a playlist original. Hey everyone, Jeff here from Films at Home. Thanks for coming back to the podcast today. Now, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're following on your favorite audio apps, I appreciate all of your support. Now, as I mentioned in my last coming soon video, rather than doing these weekly, I am going to do these monthly. So each month, starting at the beginning of the month, like this, beginning of May 2023, I will have an update and a quick rundown of selected 4K and Blu-ray titles that I want to call out for this month with their release dates. And then I will dive into some of the recent news from the past month that I want to cover in sort of a podcast format. We'll dive into media play news. We'll look at some of their sales numbers, some of the revenue reports, see how the market's doing, and just cover anything else that I thought was important from the last month. But first and foremost, the most important part of this is so that you guys know what's coming out this month. And I make some personal recommendations to you for movies that I would pick up. Now, to kick things off, typically most movies come out on a Tuesday, which would be May 2nd, first Tuesday of the month. But on Monday, May 1st, Terror Vision had a release. They had the horror workout. If you like Terror Vision, if you like wacky horror stuff, that's a super cool release with one of the better looking slip covers that I've seen recently. So I have to shout them out. They were on the podcast too. If you want to hear about their label and their brand, go check them out. That's a few episodes back, but they're on May 1st. Then on May 2nd, we have a pretty good day for 4K. It's pretty decent. Um, first one is Deep Impact on 4K. I'm very excited. There will be a review video coming soon to the channel for that release. I have not been able to uh, film it yet, but I was at least able to watch the movie. So I'll give my thoughts on that because it's been sort of controversial. We also have Wings of Desire, Wim Wenders movie. That is a 4K release from Criterion that's coming out May 2nd. I actually have a story about Wings of Desire. I found that Blu-ray at a thrift store for $1.99. I think it was a Goodwill just sitting there. The only time I've ever found a Criterion collection in a, in a Goodwill, but that happened to be the one. So that has a special spot in my collection. And then there's also Skyline on 4K. Now, this one is coming from Shout Factory. It's another like kind of, I would say it's, it's funny because they're doing some like smaller 4K releases, which is very cool. Um, they're sort of getting licensed into movies and, and just putting stuff out there. So if you like Skyline, that's coming. Big release titles, 80 for Brady and Champions, a couple of, I would say, meh movies. Um, and then Film Noir, Volume 13, The Dark Side of Cinema, that's coming from Kino. And if you like the Disney 100th Anniversary Steelbooks, they're putting out uh, the first three Star Wars movies, the original. So New Hope, uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. They're getting these like, I don't know if you've seen these steelbooks, guys. They're like these weird silver steelbooks. I'm personally not a fan. I wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole. But if you want them, they're out there on May 2nd. Now, if we jump ahead to May 9th, May 9th is a pretty big day because we have the Superman uh, 1 through 4 collection. I'm excited to see what those look like. I've heard different things from different people. Um, I don't have mine in yet. I think that I'll probably be getting them. Um, but we'll see. So Superman comes out May 9th. You also have branded to kill on 4k, which is definitely a lesser known movie, but that's a 4k from the criterion collection. We got the shiver of the vampires on 4k and knock at the cabin. That's probably the biggest one that you guys know. Knock at the cabin was the new M night Shyamalan movie that comes to 4k as well as two orphan vampires. So two orphan vampires and the shiver of vampires, uh, come out from, uh, indicator powerhouse in the u.s both on 4k other than that there is a 4k steelbook for knock at the cabin so if you're interested in in steelbooks you could pick that up but um yellowstone season five part one is out there but it's kind of a slow day otherwise now moving ahead to may 16th there's the italian job on 4k not the original 2003 with mark Wahlberg. we also have max Fleischer's uh superman these are like the OG Superman cartoons. I know my buddy Heath, Serial at Midnight, he was super pumped about these. I don't go back that far with the cartoon stuff. I don't have a huge amount of nostalgia for them, but this seems to be a pretty cool release for fans of Superman. I'm more of a Batman guy. I have all the Batman animated series, but if you like Superman, those are cartoons from 1941 to 1943. Now we also have Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. That's coming out on 4K. We have The Longest Yard coming out on 4k from Kino Lorber. And then a uh, shout out to uh, my buddy Fran over at Radiance Films. He's got Yakuza Graveyard that's hitting Blu-ray on May 16th. 
You can also grab Shooter on 4K, but I believe that's a re-release that's been out there before. Now, if you jump ahead a week to May 23rd, this is uh, another fairly big day. It's like every day or every week now, uh, we get multiple 4K titles. I mean, if you go back just a couple of years, you'd be lucky to get one or two, um, especially in 2020 when there was no theatrical releases. Like it was so slow at times, but this is crazy. So May 23rd, you get Brotherhood of the Wolf 4K. Um, you get Shazam. Fury of the Gods 4K, and it has an icon edition, which I got an early look at the packaging for. If you want to check that out, it's in my YouTube shorts. It's on my Instagram page. They have some different packaging options. There's a steelbook. There's like 100th anniversary slip. There's an icon edition, but that one's coming out. You've got Creed 3 on 4K. So back-to-back weeks of Jonathan Majors movies. It's funny. He's nowhere to be found on the Creed 3 cover now and on... um, the quantum mania ant-man and the wasp he's like way up in the they have super like minimized his role in this movie they don't even list him on the back where all the marketing leading up to it was like kang 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 jonathan majors so we'll see what happens with him but boy they've ripped him out of the headlines already um but we also get outside of creed 3 we get the running man 4k arnold schwarzenegger that should be super dope and crank on 4k jason state the movie from 2006 that has an unreal steelbook from lionsgate that's going to be a best buy exclusive but those lionsgate steelbooks are unreal and crank is one of the coolest ones now for the horror fans out there if you like shutter vhs 99 i love the vhs series i have every single one of the blu-rays i'll definitely be getting vhs 99 but that comes out on blu-ray as well so that's one you can pick up and then for the classic fans out there there's a couple classic movies my man godfrey uh, is coming out from 1957 joy house from 1964 now to round out the month on may 30th this is actually an even bigger day for 4k we've got multiple catalog releases and a couple of new releases mostly catalog though here um first one rain man 4k it's the first 4k release coming from mvd um they went back and actually did some work on that to make it uh better i guess they had some issues i know it's supposed to come out earlier um one that i'm super excited about the night of the hunter 4k from 1955 this is a great great movie if you haven't seen it now i have the criterion collection blu-ray release but this is another one where kino scooped up the rights to the 4k and put it out there before criterion could criterion dragged their feet on 4k and kino just scooped up so many of their releases to put out on this format so the night of the hunter 4k is one i'm super looking forward to if you are a criterion fan thelma and louise is coming to 4k on may 30th from arrow video we also have the last starfighter on 4k And from Scream Factory, we have The People Under the Stairs, Wes Craven's 1991, uh, I would say horror classic. That's got a 4K release. You're also getting The Haunting on 4K. That's from Paramount, upgrading their Paramount Presents Blu-ray title. And we get a re-release of Cliffhanger on 4K. I have the bare bones one, but that's a new steelbook. Now, you also get Drowning by the Numbers in 4K from Severin Films. That's going to be a little more niche for a lot of you guys out there. But Severin's got a 4K that day. And then the one major title, 65, that's the Adam Driver movie um, where he's like fighting dinosaurs. Um, That's coming out on 4K on May 30th. So that's the only real big uh, new release. The rest of it's all catalog stuff. Um, And then there's actually, for some reason, at the end of the month, because I just did this at the end of April, they just dump a whole bunch of stuff. Warner Archive has multiple titles coming out. Kino has multiple Blu-rays coming out. There's a bunch of stuff coming from uh, from Kino. Like I said, Mondo Macabro has a bunch of stuff coming out. It seems like they, they wait to the end of the month for all this stuff, but there are like, no joke, 40, 50 releases on this day on May 30th. So if you're going to save your money for the end of the month, May 30th, right around Memorial Day, uh, that would be the time to do it. Now, checking in on some news, um, I usually go to Media Play News for my physical media news, and I have to recommend them 100%, but they actually finally had a, um, a sales report on the entire year so for physical media. So we kind of look week by week, right? But a, a report just came out literally uh, today as I'm recording this May 1st um, that the US DVD and Blu-ray industry generated $1.34 billion for the 12 months that ended March 2023. So if you work in business, you may work on fiscal years. You go like April 1st to April 1st. That's called a fiscal year. Um, that's sort of what they're looking at here. So they went from basically April 1st, 2022 to the end of March 2023. So they looked at the whole fiscal year. So it was over a billion dollars. So 
still a billion dollar industry. It's not a multi-billion dollar industry. And next year, given that it's 1.34, we'll see if it's still a billion dollar industry. But they also mentioned, and Stephanie Pranch did it, or Prange, I'm not sure how to say her name, but Media Plain News, she did a great job on this title, uh, on this article, because she talks about the titles that were the big sellers. It was Spider-Man No Way Home and Top Gun Maverick. Um, Collector's editions uh, drove growth. So actually collector's editions in this article, she mentions their year over year sales rose 85%. So $80 million was in collector's editions. So like this is when I say like there is that niche market out there that is growing while the mass market is shrinking. The collector editions grew by 85%. That's crazy, crazy numbers. Um, so, you know, DVD also still sells a lot and, um, you know, it's still 70% of the market, which is crazy. That's what they had for last year. DVD outsells Blu-ray with a 71% share of unit sales. So kind of wild that that's still happening, right? It's it's 70% Blu-ray, 30% DVDs. But um, they did mention that 26% of US households had bought a DVD or a Blu-ray in the six months prior to the closing out of the year. So that's about the same as it was a year ago. So that's good. That means, you know, we're not losing consumers. We're not gaining any, but nobody dropped out. So it's the same. Um, and it's interesting that they mentioned a lot of this is actually um, from households with children. So 39% of them versus 26% mass you know, audience, they still buy DVDs and Blu-rays. So you're like about uh, not, not half as, not twice as likely, but like one and a half times more likely to buy DVD and Blu-ray um, if you have kids, which is I guess no surprise, but it's funny that like with all the streaming options for kids, that families are still the most likely to buy those uh, DVD and Blu-rays. Now, I did want to look because Media Play News hadn't had sales numbers up on just like what performed well at the end of April, and they do have those numbers up now. Um, Cocaine Bear was a big seller, but again, if we look at Cocaine Bear, 43% Blu-ray. It's crazy. 57% on DVD. Magic Mike's Last Dance was number two, 40% Blu-ray. Like these movies just don't sell on Blu-ray. Even Top Gun Maverick is 48% Blu-ray. Whoever the 52% of you out there who are watching Top Gun Maverick on DVD, like, please stop. You need to see this one on 4K at the very, very least. But it's just so interesting. Like there are very few playing at 57% was like the highest market share. Um, but yeah, Cocaine Bear, you know, sold a fair amount. As for 4K discs, Rebel Without a Cause, 12 Angry Men, Serpico, and The Haunting of Julia dominated the end of April there. And then Plane and Top Gun Maverick rounded out the top five or six. So, um, you know, still 4K, if you look at that market and what's selling, it's still super catalog heavy. Like Plain sold a lot. Black Panther Wakanda Forever sold a fair amount. Everything Everywhere All at Once still continues to sell. But if you really look back, it's it's the Maltese Falcon. It's the Seventh Seal. It's the Haunting of Julia. It's Serpico, 12 Angry Men, Rebel Without a Cause. It's these catalog titles. It's Flashdance rounds out the top 10. It's, you know, these Lord of the Rings, To Kill a Mockingbird, like the Dark Knight trilogy, Cool Hand Luke, Army of Darkness, Coraline. It's not new releases, which are driving 4K, which is a kind of interesting thing that I hadn't noticed uh, really until now. And then for the end of the month, like it was bad. It was bad in April. Um, so I've only got mid-April numbers, but Blu-ray revenue was down 74% from the same week a year ago, and DVD was down 50%. So compared to the 63% total compared to last year's week ending April 15th. So there must've been a big release last year that came out on Blu-ray because we took a huge hit this year. But the good news is I think going back to that initial report, you know, it's still a billion dollar industry. It is still uh, selling tens of millions of units. They have 94 million units sold. And this is just the US market, right? So this doesn't even include that 1.34 billion doesn't include the awesome European market and especially all the work that's being done in the UK with labels like Arrow Video and labels like Radiance Films stepping in and, you know, the BFI and other labels over there in the UK that are primarily UK. They sell a ton of stuff too. And it doesn't count Australia, right? It's uh, Umbrella Entertainment and Via Vision and the work that they're doing. So there's a 
ton of good stuff going on and it's still you know going well and those collector's editions going up 85 percent is a super interesting number like i love this data so i'm going to link this in the description if you guys want to read this report very very cool report on just what's going on out there um but it's kind of crazy because dvd still dominates and i just i'm just not 100 percent sure why to be fully honest i i, I do know why but I'm going to be interested if that shifts. Like Netflix is not doing DVD anymore, so they don't have to buy literally, you know, hundreds or potentially thousands of DVDs to keep up with their. They had a couple million DVD subscribers. Like when a new release came out, they probably had to buy a decent amount of every new release, and they bought most of them, I would guess, on DVD because that's the major format people were renting from. Uh, Redbox does the same thing. You know, if they ever slow down there's a lot of dvds there so i do just wonder if like the dvd is just like that mass consumption it's libraries red box rental stores netflix dvd like if that's where all that's coming from it's just like these big bulk purchases and i bet a lot of it's family too um, because i have to imagine at this point most of the collectors out there are buying at least blu-ray if not 4k and you know it just goes to show by based on what's selling on the 4k format it's not the new releases the catalog titles that collectors are going out and like upgrading and rebuying those are the ones that trend in 4k so the 4k market's definitely collector uh home theater enthusiast focused but, you know, that's pretty much what's going on. I wanted to highlight those sales numbers, what happened in April. Um, you know, it'll be a very interesting next year because if those collector's editions continue to sell, like the collector edition market being $80 million in the U.S. is is a good number. It'll probably crack 100 next year, if not higher, and it'll continue to eat up share of the the major market. And that's sort of that number to watch while that number goes up and the mass market goes down. Where do they meet in the middle? Where do they plateau? So we'll keep an eye on that. But um, this is what's happening. This is what's going on in May. It's a big month for 4K. So budget, be smart, buy the releases you really want. Um, you know, at this point, we're so spoiled. There's so much available on this format that you shouldn't feel the need to have to buy everything, right? Like there was a day where we were lucky to get a 4K release every week. And I understand why people were buying them every week. But at this point, you've got three or four catalog titles, two or three new releases, five or six total 4Ks every week. You got a budget, you got to pick and choose what you want. Plenty of good stuff from Kino, plenty of good stuff from Scream Factory, Shout Factory, plenty of Criterions this month, plenty of standard Blu-rays. So, you know, figure out, figure out what you guys want to do, budget, be smart, you know, don't, don't overdo it, but it's a really good month with tons of great stuff. So I think you guys will really like what's coming in May and I will keep you updated over here on YouTube and on the podcast, um, with as many reviews as I can get out of all these titles, because I'm a one man show. So it's getting, I will definitely say harder and harder as the titles ramp up to keep up, but you'll notice I eventually get to them <laughs> rebel without a cause. I was a couple weeks behind, you know, it happens. It's going to happen. I got family. I got a day job. We're going to keep up with it though and do as many as I can and stay up to date with this stuff for you guys. It just may not come on release day, but there's plenty of other people who are doing great reviews out there as well. So, you know, support the community as a whole. Um, you know, people like in search of physical media who does a, a great job and he has tons of stuff out there. Ken from mid-level media, serial at midnight and Heath, you know, Elliot Cohen, boutique Blu-rays, movie guy, 365. There's a ton of people who are doing this and doing it really really well and i'm just i'm just one of them so you know I'll, I'll keep you up to date with everything that's going on here we'll be back in june for another episode of coming soon i'll try to get that out around memorial day so you guys know what's coming in june but that's the news for may so if you're subscribed here on youtube you'll get all the updates if you're not consider giving me a subscribe make sure you follow the podcast if you're on that audio side that helps support us and find more listeners and of course leave us a five-star review if you're enjoying the content plenty more interviews coming up with great guests so stay tuned for all the uh, rest of the podcast episodes plenty more reviews coming your way but i appreciate all the support thank you guys for all of this thank you for staying positive have a great day stay safe stay healthy and i'll talk to you soon coming soon be sure to subscribe to the Films at Home podcast using your favorite app so you don't miss another episode. And while you're there, don't forget to rate and review this podcast, which helps us out tremendously. You can also help support us by watching our short form content over on YouTube and TikTok by searching Films at Home. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at films underscore at underscore home. The intro and outro were created by Elon Osborne. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.